Hey there, welcome to a video about creating a special effect explosion, just like that. But instead of me going like this, it's going to look like this. When you add it as a cool moment to up the visuals in your game level. And I use this one in a social lens. You can use this special effect, cartoon effect in a video game or maybe just for your video. It's cool to learn how to do your own effects instead of just always downloading clip art. This will walk you through After Effects new interface and show you how to create this effect. Before we get started, please subscribe because subscriptions keep me making these videos. So, your turn. Watch the video, create something, and please share it back in the comments below. Here's the cartoon explosion in After Effects, and this is what you'll be recreating. Start by making a new project, file, new, new project. Make sure you save your file up front, otherwise you'll have cache appearing in those mysterious places out on your computer. Make your first composition, so clicking on the composition button. Instead of doing vertical, I'm going to do horizontal since it's a tutorial. Make your composition vertical if you're going to be making a lens effect. I'm limiting the timeline to 10 seconds, and if you want to toggle between seconds and frames, holding down the command key on a Mac will toggle between frames and seconds. If you want to see a black background, that's this icon right there. And that's all the controls you'll need to know for this one. I'm going to rename this composition, selecting its name in the project area. I'm just going to call this one Smoke and pressing Enter. Create a new solid. Right click New Solid. And you can call it whatever you want. You can pick any color because the color is not going to affect the outcome of this. Solid layers are used. Besides to add color or a blocking layer, they're also just used to apply effects to. Clicking on OK. And there's your new solid layer. To make the sphere, select CC Sphere and just drag it here or drag it onto your layer. I'm zooming in a little bit. And that's not much to look at. Let's play with the lighting a bit. Under Light, we can increase the intensity. And you could change the angle. Now, there's various ways we could do this effect. You could do a lot of work right in here. But it's always cool to learn a few new things. Going back under Effects and Presets, type in Threshold. And drag and drop it either here or here. And that's all we're looking for, a threshold, making this more of a cartoony black or white image. Pull down the area into here. If you want it to appear exactly on the bottom, that just deals with the angle of light. So now you have a wonderful way to make this graphic novel or cartoon looking element. Now you always wonder why to pre-comp things, which way is better to comp and then make sub-comps or go the other way. In this case, I'm gonna pre-comp this because I want a few of these objects out here to be the puff of cloud of explosionness. Make all this nice and clean and to move these elements on the inside, I'm going to right click here and select pre-compose, but since now it's off the screen, the other way to get to pre-compose is to go under layers and select pre-compose from here. Now I'm just doing that because it's a video and you want to be able to see the menus. Now, this is important. Leave all attributes of smoke on the outside. That's not what I want to do because then I didn't need to make a pre-composition. I want to nest this, put all these elements within the composition to make it nice and neat, very portable as an object. So move all attributes into the new composition. Okay. When you click on here, you don't see those attributes. If you want to see those attributes, one way is to go to the projects and you can see there's smoke and I really should rename this one smoke puff. There we go. And if I double click on smoke puff here or out here layer wise, we'll get to the original smoke puff, which has that effect on it. Did this so this way you can just duplicate this layer and just move it a little bit, scale it. You can use the S key to scale, or just drag that object a little smaller, hold down the shift key for uniformity. I know Photoshop, you don't need to do that anymore. You still have to do this in After Effects. Let me put this one behind the other one. So I'll just drag my smoke my smoke puff over there. And I'll duplicate it one more time. Just making this happy little cartoony cloud space like this. 
however you envision it, however many you feel you need to achieve the effect, just create your art that way. So cool, now you have your basic element of your smoke puff. Now it's time to animate it a little bit and then get it to look like smoke. You're working towards that final visual. So you can see it as starting with the smallest element and growing your visual effect to the end timeline. Selecting all these smoke puffs. You compose this down there, but since you can't see it, go to layer, pre-compose. And I'm gonna call this one smoke hyphen details. So now here's our smoke. And I'm going to duplicate this layer, command D like this, because we're going to use the top layer and the bottom layer to build this effect. We need a new solid, but why create a new solid when you already have one hanging out there in the projects? This way you have less assets if you just reuse that solid layer. On top of this solid layer, and let me turn off my smokes for a second and just clicking the eyes, turn off the smokes, go under effects and presets and type in fractal. And the type of fractal you want is fractal noise right here and just drag it onto your solid layer or drag it to your layer right here, your choice. And this will create some texturing within that little smoke puff. For the type of fractal, you could experiment. I find that dynamic twist is a cool looking one for this type of explosion. If you're new to fractals, definitely watch one of the other videos I do on fractals. Our awesome effects achieve a lot, whether it's flames, smoke, texturization of an area, and so much more when you're doing visual special effects. Some other things you could play with, go under sub settings and maybe you wanna play with the scale of things. And this really depends upon your final output. Once you achieve your overall effect, you could come back here and adjust this, some of these settings. Again, if you're new to fractal noise, I urge you to go play with them. Now fractal noise isn't animated. You're gonna to have to animate that yourself. And of course you can animate any of these. The one I'm going to use evolution. Evolution, as I spin around here before I animate it, it drives the fractal. To animate this so the easiest way to do this hold down the option or alt key and click on evolution click that will bring up you see how it turns red that's because now it's going to be driven by an equation and the equation we're going to use is time time is the ticking of time in your timeline i'm going to use a multiplier of multiply which is the asterisk key 200 this will make things move quicker it's got some movement going now if you want it real fast you can just click back here type 2000, you're going to see this, whoa, way too fast, right? So 200 seems to be a good number. Experiment for what you're doing. This is an effect that just lasts a few seconds out on screen, then disappears. So you don't want to draw so much attention to this movement. You need a little movement, otherwise it could have just used a two-dimensional piece of art instead. So you use effects like this, you're bringing movement into your art. Next thing for you to do is to combine this smoke image and then you'll layer in the original smoke puff on top of that. To combine these layers, select this layer. Here's the part where you need to at least pop this one out, if not both. Really just need the second one. And, you're, and then from here, I select smoke details on layer number two. If you roll over, you can see it's using an alpha mask. If, now, before I add this layer back in, I'm going to animate this rotating slightly. Selecting this layer, which is the shape layer of the smoke puff, pressing the R key for rotation, and you can animate the key by either clicking here and just animating it a little bit, or just like before, holding down the Option key or Alt key on a PC and clicking here, you can use time multiplied by, let's try 60, because it doesn't have to move as fast. And if that's too fast, maybe I'll go down to 30. Now, as it rotates, I don't want to rotate around the center point. I want it to be a little off center. You can press the Y or click up here to select the anchor point tool and click on the smoke layer and just move the anchor maybe somewhere down here. And you could adjust this as you see the final effect. Now, one other thing to do, or actually two other things to do. I want to turn on this layer, 
I'm going to use opacity, so pressing the T key. The other way, of course, would have been to expand all this and find opacity down there, but just pressing T for transparency gives you access to opacity. And I'm just going to pull this down a bit. This way, you pick up some of the black outline to make it have that graphic novel cartoon effect looked. And I've been holding this anchor tool. I should drop it by pressing the V key or just clicking up here so I don't accidentally move anchor points. This other one moves. It's like, oh no, it's not moving with it. That's because they're two separate layers. To have this layer follow this layer's rotation, all you have to do is press the R key here, selecting this layer, press the R key to expose the rotation. And next to the rotation is the pick whip right here. And you can just drag that to the smoke details layer, the one that's being used with mat for the mask, the one that's shut off. And now they'll both rotate together. A little bit. Why is one off? Well, that's because the anchor points are different. And that's okay. They don't have to be exactly alike, the anchor points. I will move it a little bit more towards the bottom, like here. Doing this effect, I found a little visual offset. Makes it look a lot better. The last thing I'm going to add to this layer, and I'm not going to add to this layer. Actually, I'm adding to the smoke detail layer, which is the one behind it, is a turbulent displace. And the reason I'm doing that is to add a little extra motion as everything explodes, as the puff of cloud forms. So turbulent displace, to take that one, I'm dragging it onto the smoke details layer, the second one that's being used as a mask. And now you can see what it's going to do, and there's not much turbulent displacement happening. It's happening a little too slow. I'm going to increase the evolution. So evolution becomes this fun shape. This adds a lot more to the visual. So just like before, holding down the option key and clicking here, type in time multiplied by 200 earlier. Let me try 200 again. And this makes the cloud look a lot more organic. Going to preview this on a solid black background. So it's a little easier to see. Now that you achieve this, the outside layer will be the composition of the smoke cloud exploding. Just like before, go fold up these layers. I'm going to select all three of these and then go under layer, pre-compose, and this will be the explosion layer. I'm still keeping all my attributes with, within this composition over here. This composition is about creating the explosion. I need a solid, so going back to project, using reusing that same solid. This solid will have a particle system applied to it. Type in particle and use CC particle world, drag it to this layer. Let me turn off my top layer of the explosion for a moment. And this is the default particle exploding. Okay. Let's first shape the particle system to look a little more like an explosion because this is exploding, but gravity is keeping it down. Go under the physics of this. Gravity has to be turned down to zero. And that gives you that burst that happens. You're going to swap the look of the particle. And this is what's going to make this look a lot more like an explosion going under particle and don't want to line. You can experiment for what you want to do. Choose a textured disc. Now we didn't add a texture, so we see nothing under texture. Just click that open under texture layer for the source. Choose your, choose the explosion, which are the puffs. All right, you have your puffs going, but you know, stuffing just doesn't look right. You need to contain this explosion and then you'll have the special effect. To do that, let's look at the birth rate and this has to be animated. For your animation, let me go into frames. The animation is going to take place across one or two seconds. So at the beginning, the birth rate will be zero and this will be animated. So I'm clicking on here to set a keyframe. I'm selecting the particle system layer and let me rename this particle right there. And I'm gonna press the UU key to expose the track of what's being animated, which is here. And it starts out at no particles. And then a few frames later, it explodes into lots of particles. As many as you want. Let me type in the number 20. And then a few frames later, it'll be constant just for a few frames. 
I'm going to click this icon to drop another keyframe in. So it's 20 by 20. And then it just falls back down to zero. Now that this is done, let's jump back to particles. And under particles, we have the different sizes. So when it first comes out, they're going to be big. And then, and this will be animated. So they come out big and then the depth size, I'm going to set down to zero. Now, if this is taking too long for your particles to get off scene, and this really depends upon the effect you're trying to achieve, you can decrease the longevity right up here, right underneath birth rate. Let's say it's 0.2. So now you have this little dust cloud of an explosion. And this is the type of explosion you want. Excellent. You could play with the longevity. So instead of 0.2, let's put that back to one. At one, you could see that the cloud has a lot more time to grow. I think I'm gonna set my longevity to 0.5, which would be a happy middle ground for everything. So experiment with longevity. Now, if you're doing a sprite sheet animation, you wanna make sure that your particles don't leak over the edge. And again, that has to deal with either with birth rate or longevity. If the particles exist a little less on screen, let's say 0.4, they won't make it to the edge. And this is what you're looking out for in a visual effect to make sure that boundary illusion is taken care of. This is looking good for this demo. Now, the last thing I wanna deal with is the colorization it's under the particle system itself. It's birth color and death color. And this is a fun way to transition your composition for maybe this red hot look and then it fades out to this white puffiness going on. For your cartoon look, it just peters out as a puff of smoke. Now, if you want to start building up like you want a little more pow in the center of this, a little more graphic novel style to what's going on, you could go under shapes and select the star tool, making sure you have no layer selected. Otherwise, the shape tool acts as a mask. And we could draw this star. And you can see where this is going. And this is the type of explosion I'm looking for for my graphic novel effect. You can see there's many different parameters to make this look realistic or to push the stylization of this. So enjoy the effect. And again, share it back in the comments below. Look forward to seeing what you create.